Uchikake with the sign of bamboo and mist, attributed to Gio Nankai, painted on white figured silk and decorated with gold leaf and gold powder. It belonged to the Edo period and nowadays is located in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. This unique uchikake is the work of Gion Nankai, a well-known poet and artist of the early Nanga movement. Penelope Mason tells us in her book At Arts of Japan how Rai Sanio described the circumstances of the creation of this uchikake in one of his poems. He describes how it was a commission for a wealthy chonin, Karakaneya Baishu, for one of his mistresses. He was a, cl a close acquaintance of Nankai and convinced him to add his brush to the project. Anuchikake, according to Japanese kimono by Ugo Mustenberg, it's a style of garment that became popular during the Momoyoma period and continues to be used today, but in a different way. It's a gown with long slits on silk with a heavy brocading. It was worn by noble court ladies over the kimono on formal occasions. In her book, Kimono, Fashion in Culture, Lisa Baldi describes the uchikake as a coat worn by ruling class women, as a second kosobe, but unbelted, coat-like, and over the actual kosobe. The verb used to describe this usage is uchikake ru, which means to drape upon. Nowadays, it is an integral part of the bridal dress in the traditional wedding ceremony. The essential difference with the kimono is basically that it is part of it, another layer. Lisa Baldi states that the kimono first started as underwear during the Heian age. It developed from the plain white small sleeved kosobe as undergarment worn next to the lady's skin. The uchikake and the kimono can be used separately. It do, it don't, they don't have to be together. The uchikake is just for special occasions, adding another layer to the kimono. Jiu Nankai was the eldest son of the clan physician of the Kishu clan in present-day Wakanaya Prefecture. He studied Confucianism and Chinese literature in Edo, modern Tokyo, and won some renown for his calligraphy and his poems, which were composed not in Japanese but in Chinese. As a painter, he seems to have been self-taught. His only teachers were Chinese paintings. In the book Scholar Painters of Japan, the Nanga School, James Cahill, tells us that the first generation of Nanga painters is made up of those artists who were active, active from the early decade of the 18th century. There were three outstanding figures among them. Gion Nankai was one of them, and he was the oldest. For subjects and in his style, tonal values in color were less important, such as monochromatic paintings of bamboo or, or branches. Some of the qualities that distinguish Nanga from Chinese paintings are the prevalence of decorative abstraction and repeated patterns, a general flattening of the picture 
at the graded relents on heavy lightning. They were most of the times accompanied by poems, which describe the painting and make it even more special. These characteristics are specifically for the Nanga school, and Jiu Nankai was, was one of the most representatives painters of this school. <laughs>